Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Ad Project Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Joe Shelliard from Ad Advance. And today, back by popular demand, we have <laughs> Sean Morgan on the podcast. So, Sean, awesome to have you back. Great to be back. Wasn't, uh, wasn't too much time in between the last one and this one. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, we had Sean on the podcast talking through different developments in AI. We love to nerd out and just talk about this stuff. And so, I kind of figured we'd loop you in onto the conversation conversations. Um, previously, we were really talking about, you know, just the general updates that we're seeing overall impacts to uh, like search traffic, search volume, how people search for products, like where we can see all these areas going. Yep. Um, and so I wanted to just kind of continue that conversation and build upon that because there were a lot of other items that we could talk about. And with how quickly things are changing, um, yeah, so many areas to think through and talk through. So just wanted to give you an insight into our thoughts and really how we see these tools impacting advertising mm -hmm. and then how we can also utilize these on our marketing and our advertising. Um, before we get into that, if people missed the previous uh, episode, maybe you want to give a quick intro on background and how you got into the, the into ad events, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, yeah, I... I'm obviously not from here again. Um, I'm from Belfast, Ireland, and moved over here in 2012, went to school, um, uh, worked at a few different agencies in town, always on the digital side, um, mostly PPC, Google, social ads, um, and then found found my way to, to Ad Advance about two, two and a half years ago almost. So um, yeah, full, full e-commerce now, but Ad Advance is a lot of B2B stuff that I used to do and um, yeah, just really enjoying it. We're, we're pretty forward thinking people here, so it's a good team to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I, so Sean and I just as a little like segue, Sean and I, we went out axe throwing, so our whole team <laughs> went out axe throwing the other day, um, which is literally what it sounds like. There, there's a setup where you can throw axes and it's kind of like a big dartboard, but it's like wood. You got to stick the axe in and you get certain points. Sean was talking some mad <laughs> smack when we were doing it. <laughs> so we kept going back and forth. But that strong Irish accent yeah. came out <laughs> when you were talking trash. I think it was to my own detriment because I ended up not doing very well after after we started that. But yeah, no, it was fun. It was fun, man. I think I only hit the bullseye once. And every time I turned around after I started talking smack, Joe, Joe was just <laughs> nailing the bullseye. It made me focus a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So where we kind of left it, this conversation before is talking through, like we were going through product search mm -hmm. and search in general and how, as we're looking at this, like chat GPT is coming out, very conversational. The context you can put in there is pretty amazing. Um, personally for me, like as I'm doing specific tasks, I'm finding myself going to chat GPT over Google more. Yeah. Um, and so wanted to talk through impacts to search and then let's tie it into how we see advertising kind of getting correlated into these new products that are coming out. So I don't know, walk us through, what's your thoughts there? Yeah. Um, I think we touched on it the last time too, like whether, whether or not, you know, AI and, and bot tech is going to be integrated in or is it going to be used to kind of disrupt the market and what already is going on and um i mean at this point to what you just said like using a using chat gpt just for some of the queries that you would have been putting into google before um i think we're still a ways away from it being completely integrated um but as far as not having to do the the legwork after searching that you kind of currently have to do for the most part in google depending on how how far you want to go. You know, I know that there's structured snippets there now that, that kind of give an answer to your question based on the most relevant article that, that the engine can find in whatever way it's indexed. But, um, you know, moving away from that, um, I'd like to think it would probably search on Google will become more conversational like ChatGPT currently is. Um, it's almost a little bit difficult to envision, envision how search results are going to be presented. Yeah, You know, is it going to be because of the kind of conversational aspect to chat GPT now? Um, and it's almost like an instant answer. And there are no hyperlinks or links to external sources for the most part than, from what I've seen sure. um, versus Google. That's 
pretty much all it is. You know, it's it's links to, to different sites and, and articles and resources, so on and so forth. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they, you know, how, how far does the integration go to the point where do you need, is it going to give you the, the top four or five, you know, related articles that, you know, ChatGPT essentially thinks is the most relevant and the most beneficial to the search? Sure. Or does it go the way of like this set cut and dry and you don't really need to go any further? Or yeah. you have to, you know, manipulate a prompt a certain way or give it more context so that you get the information that you're searching for? Yeah, yeah. I think on the on the search side, there, there's definitely a couple headwinds that they're facing right now. And when I say headwinds too, so we, we put a post on this and, you know, a couple of people are like, looking at it and pulling up general Google search trends and everything right now. And right now, this is not being mass market adopted. And so when we're looking at these items, we're kind of looking forward. And as these get to be more mainstream and as these products get to be built out more, we can definitely see some shifts happening. And so I think a couple of shifts that could happen. Uh, one, as people get more used to using the chat feature and the more conversational feature. I think the basis of web search changes a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so like you're saying, if I'm asking it for maybe specific products, like I think we use like camping tents as an example before. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, I'm using that um, and searching for the best camping tents. I, I don't think fully showing like a full huge page list of all the different hyperlinks like we currently see on search is going to be the most optimal answer. Yeah. I think it's going to be recommending some specific products. And so the the plus side, say from like an advertising standpoint, so say we could add sponsored ads that come up when people search for camping tents and they feel like it's going to be relevant, um, could be much more relevant mm -hmm. and tied in and very specific to those shoppers. I think the major downside that they could face is that the amount of ad real estate that I can show for each of those while still keeping it conversational is going to be much less, yeah. at least intuitively to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that web search as a whole is going to look a little bit different. There's two different ways. So one is like if I'm just asking questions. Um, and that's another piece where I could see it, it having a potential headwind or potential impact is say if I'm asking questions, like typically when I'm doing coding, I would go to Stack Overflow to try to figure out the answer. Yeah. If I can get that directly in these chatbots, I don't have to go to a website. So I don't have to click through a potentially like sponsored link. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I'm not going to that website, now I'm not seeing display ads either. Yeah. And so that was another key thing that we said is that as we're getting more and more answers available, as these things keep getting better and better, we could see web traffic going down too. And so from the Google standpoint, on the search advertising, feel like they probably can't put as many ads if they're trying to keep this conversational. And then two, on the web traffic perspective, could see that going down, which could also impact display revenues too. Yeah. I think advertising in general is is a large driver of the of the internet. You know, like if you t if, if search traffic continues to decline because, I mean, I'd like to think that it's already declined on Google just since kind of structured data has become more prominent on the first page of search. Sure. So if you do ask it a question, you're probably going to find the answer without having to, to click through to, to another site. Yeah. You know, so if traffic is going down because people aren't already clicking through to websites and AI tech is becoming more more advanced whereby it's giving you the answer without having to to dig any deeper, you know, where, where is the spot for advertising and what does that look like? You know, I mean, when you're talking about it not being a, a, an entire page of, of different links and it's pretty tailored to what you want to see. Um, and maybe it's only, you know, three products that it, that it actually comes, comes back with. Um, you know, is there potential for something similar to what already occurs on Amazon where, you, you basically select the products that you are willing to advertise against and there's two spots, you know, at the top and bottom of, of the answer sure. that are that are, you know, flagged as sponsored. You know, is that you know, they're essentially just paid paid sponsored links. Like is that the route that we end up going down? Because I find it difficult to it's almost difficult to envision and I think we covered this on the last one too, you know, how do you how do you incorporate kind of native looking ads into a teleprompter? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, without disrupting the look and feel of it already, yeah, I think the actual structure of the teleprompter is going to have to change for it to become 
you know, more aligned with, with advertising needs. Yep. Yep. I definitely agree. Yeah. And, you know, another case study that we've kind of looked at is like Alexa, as they've rolled out the platform, um, really struggled to monetize it. And one of the key reasons is it just doesn't feel natural to insert ads when you're asking it specific questions. Yep. Um, and I feel like you're going to have the same issue. Like, I can see them definitely building and oh, and we're already seeing this like with Bing chat where they tr provide references and they could provide other links and different things like that. Um, so I think you can kind of add that in, but if you get to the core of it, you're having a conversation for a lot of the uses. Mm -hmm. um, and so to keep it conversational without sounding salesy <laughs> yeah. or having the answer seem sponsored, yeah. um, it's going to be a tough balance. And at the end of the day, it seems like, from an advertising perspective, you're just losing real estate and what you can use while still keeping up that user experience for how these are designed. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, w one of the one of the things that I've, I've been thinking about over the last few weeks too was, you know, if it's not going to be if if there's the opportunity to kind of integrate it more widespread within sites themselves, where it almost becomes an add-on. So. You know, like chatbots are, are on most e-com sites, you know, as like customer support and whatever else. Sure. Does it become, you know, you go to Amazon, you still have the opportunity to, to search through Amazon with its regular search bar. Do you now have the opportunity to kind of click the bottom right corner and pull up ChatGPT and say, hey, I'm looking for, you know, a six-person tent? Yeah. You know, just give me the ones that are waterproof. You know, maybe you throw in five kind of key differentiators that you're looking for. Sure. And it just selects those five where it's still you still have the opportunity to advertise natively within the platform and you still have sponsored and you still have you know sponsored brand placements and video within those five results that are generated by chat gpt sure i don't know how much of the infrastructure of like the actual website amazon.com that changes <laughs> yeah but it's just an interesting thought i guess yeah yeah no, I, I definitely agree. And, you know, another key piece, like right now when people look at like ChatGPT, they say, well, hey, this isn't useful as web search because it doesn't pull current information in yep. right now. Um, so it's not connected to the Internet. And so it's just all off this cache data from 2021. Um, but what we're finding is now there, there's a bunch of plugins that are being added. Um, there's other tools like AutoGPT. Um, so I've had fun putting this together and putting it to use. Um, so it runs in the command line right now. So from a user interface standpoint, it's, it's pretty clunky if you're not used to using the command line. Um, but what you can do is you can actually, it's like a problem solver mm -hmm. that utilizes AI. And so as, as, um, an example, one thing that I put in was, um, I specified, okay, auto GPT, you're going to be an investment bot and you're going to look at companies and determine if it's going to be a good financial investment. And then I prompted it to look at Google and say, based off of the current stock price and the advances in AI, predict Google's future performance with these advances in AI and determine if it's going to be a good purchase. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's a lot to unpack there. And what was so cool about it and kind of scary in a way is that so it broke apart the question into multiple different sections. And so I went problem solving. And so the first piece, it's like, OK, to determine if this is going to be a good buy, first I had to figure out the financial information. And so it determined like it broke it down. It's like I'm going to need to find the financial information. So it went out, figured out that it needed to pull a K1 for Google. And then found that the K1 was a PDF. And so it said, okay, I need to write a Python script so I can open this PDF. Mm -hmm. Wrote a Python script, it errored, and then it troubleshoot it, shot it itself to figure <laughs> out, to get it to work. So then it could download this PDF and then it wrote another script so it could analyze it. And then it tied into chat GPT, fed that information in, and then it started pulling in recent articles doing Google searches on advances in AI and how it relates to Google and started combining all this information together. Yeah. And so it, it was just crazy watching this where it's like, this is actively problem solving. Um, and, and they recommend running this on like a virtual machine because it's writing scripts for itself. Yeah. So, you know, you can just imagine you give it the wrong goal and, and yeah. all of a sudden it can be like torching your hard drive or something. It could go off the rails really quick. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, 
I, I think the key point is that we're still in the very early days. And so, yeah, you can look at the current product and see the deficiencies in it. Mm -hmm. So, yep, you're, we're not going to get like new live news stuff or from products. Like we're not going to be able to see everything where it's currently at right now. And so there's a ton of key limitations for how we use search. Yep. But those are going to change. <laughs> and so I think everybody's going to want to go to a single spot where I can do my traditional search. I can do my product research. I can ask questions. I can just browse around. Like everything I think is going to be funneled into one. And now it's how do you integrate that all together, make it conversational, have a good user experience, but still figure out a revenue model for it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, I mean, even from like the advertising side of things when it comes to like creative solutions like do you do you think there's going to be big disruption in the next kind of year to 18 months as far as you know there's so many platforms out there now that that will be able to generate video sure. you know audio whatever whatever you're looking for essentially yeah. and i feel like there are on amazon like there's some sellers out there that they, they simply just don't have a production budget to create assets like that. Sure. You know, is, is this something that is going to be so readily available now that, you know, most, most uh, you know, product video is going to be AI generated at some point? I, I think so. Um, so currently we're using MidJourney right now with our agency. And so for those who aren't familiar, MidJourney is an image generation AI. Um, and so what you do is you can specify different prompts. You just tell, say, the picture that you want it to look like, and it'll generate different pictures based off of that. And so it can be photorealistic down to vector art and anything in between. Um, like any of these tools, it's really trying to figure out the right prompts to get what you're truly looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can do other things like right before we were recording this podcast, Molly and our team combined mine and Matt's faces <laughs> together, <laughs> which, you know, at the end of the day, isn't that complex, but it was funny and kind of disturbing at the same time. Uh, <laughs> but, but you can generate some really crazy pictures really crazy pieces and like how we're looking at this is for like images for our website or different, you know, currently we have like some clip art things. And so we can do some different vector art that we can use mid journey for. Mm -hmm. You can do the same thing for creatives. You can upload images and then kind of specify how to change that too. So you could have product pictures, but maybe I want to change out the lifestyle in the background. Yeah. Um, you could definitely do that. Um, for video, I definitely see that coming. It's not here yet. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, so some of the videos that you see are pretty disturbing. Like where if you search for like Will Smith eating spaghetti, um, <laughs> AI, like it's, it's just these goofy videos that they, they do not look right. They kind of yeah. look like the person, like when he's eating spaghetti, sometimes it's coming in and out of his mouth and like, you know, it's just you can tell that, I mean, that one, it's obvious that it's off, but <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. But the, I think these things are going to keep getting better where it's going to completely transform items like video too. It's not there yet, but with how fast this is progressing, I can see that happening in a short time period. Yeah. I don't think we're that far away from it. And I mean, even for, from what you just mentioned, like, you know, folks that are maybe selling like outdoor performance gear or, you know, things for hiking, say it's a pair of hiking shoes or boots or something you know you can instead of going and staging a photo shoot you can essentially say hey i want you know this background you know the 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 boots kind of perched on a on a mountain top with you know snow-capped mountains in the background and yeah. you know ultimately something that's eye-catching and you use that within your your kind of creative assets and try and you know I think it becomes a lot easier to kind of test and see what works and what doesn't to a certain extent because all of that stuff is just, it's right at your fingertips. You don't have to have, you know, staged shoots or, you know, someone kind of behind the scenes using Photoshop to, to doctor images and whatnot. You're, you're literally just, you know, spending five minutes writing some prompts and then you're getting a pretty good end result. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And even on the, like the headline or... You know, the, the catchphrases that we're including, including in the creatives kind of walk through, like, how, how are you utilizing that right now? Yeah. I mean, I, I've been taking, like, actually just going through some accounts right now and, and looking at where we can kind of change and, and test different headlines against each other on SD and, and sponsored brand placements. But, um, you know, just pulling kind of the top five to ten, uh, like, value prop of that specific product sure. or key descriptive words of that specific product and then you know 
really simple prompt to start, you know, give me 10 headlines that feature, you know, five to seven, 10 different words, essentially, or, you know, phrases that, that sure. I've chosen and then refining it further once you see that comes back. Because a lot of the times that I've found, like, if you just ask it the most basic thing and provide, you know, 10 different queries, 10 different words for it to work off. Yeah. It, it won't necessarily be in a tone that you're looking for. Sure. You know, does the tone fit the brand? Is it too fun? Is it too business-like? Is it too bland? You know, is it only using one of the key differentiators versus two or three that it could chain together? Yep. But going through like an iterative process of maybe two or three different prompts after that, and it, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, make, make these more serious. Sure. And it, it will tweak the language to make it more serious than, you know, something ending with an exclamation mark and a little bit more carefree and fun. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're using that against five or six of the same product, but variants of the product, different color, different size, um, most of the targeting is essentially the same. How are people reacting to that headline? Is that providing a higher click-through rate? Are we seeing more conversions? Can we tie it back to the headline? Um, so, I mean, it's it saves a lot of creative thinking time. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and, and you're just iterating, you know, off the, the output that you're getting, yep. which I find to be, you know, still creative in a sense because mm -hmm. you're the one at the end of the day picking and choosing prompts and picking and choosing what you're going to sure. ultimately use. But yeah, it's super. The outputs that it gives you gives you like a lot of the time. I don't think. Yeah, you can think of them yourselves and you can get creative, but just taking you know five to ten different key prompts, get key descriptors and seeing what it comes back with and then changing it slightly and going through an iterative process. Yep. I think you end up with some pretty good stuff at the end. Yeah. Yeah. It just provides, it's kind of like brainstorming with a group at that point. Yeah. Cause you, you can come up with so many different perspectives and what I love about using it too is like I can copy in like say the product detail page itself and then say generate or sections of the product detail page. And then you can outline the brand voice. Mm -hmm. So if you have branding guidelines, so here's my brand voice and then generate five headlines. And then you can also specify like speaking to this core audience. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if I'm speaking to like, Oh, doors gear. So, all right, speak to families with young children. Yeah. Or speak to avid outdoors people, or whatever it is. You can you can specify who the target audience is for too. And like what Sean is saying is that what's cool is you get so many different examples, and then it kind of it, it's a good way to like open your eyes to oh yeah I didn't even think about that approach. Um, we still use our intuition. It's not like we're just copying and pasting everything that's there, but it just provides so many different examples that then you can pick and choose on. And then if you like where it's going, then kind of build on those prompts too to provide even more or take it a step further and even more targeted. Um, and so it saves a lot of that brainstorming time so we can get into probably the highest value items, which is that like critical analysis piece and that intuition that goes along with that on, okay, these are going to be great ones to test. And now at the end of the day, we can use the data to tell us what's truly working. And so, yeah. yeah, it just allows us to iterate quicker so we can do more tests and hopefully have more targeted creatives that go along with that, that convert better. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even to, to your point, just to kind of build off it a little bit was, um, you know, in, in choosing kind of the, the voice or given, you know, chat GPT brand guidelines and, and you know, the, this is kind of what we want it to sound like sort of thing or picking and choosing your, your ideal audience. Like I've used it a number of times just to, you know, what are the top 10 just keywords that resonate most with young mothers, you know, sure. for, you know, someone selling baby stuff, you know, yeah. whatever it may be. Yeah. And, you know, it'll give you the top 10 words that essentially people are clicking through. Sure. You know, or, or headlines that are associated with that word or whatever it may be. And then you can kind of use that and those words that you get to craft something around that because you know that, you know, this topic is resonating with your audience. How do I incorporate that into a headline so that we're able to generate more click-throughs because we know it resonates? Sure. So, 
you know, elements like that I think are really cool that you can kind of specify, you know, the voice, the audience, what you're really looking for and going through that process to ultimately get what, what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, there's so many other things that we could talk about, um, but I think we'll probably wrap it up there. And so I'll just go through a quick summary on, you know, key items that we covered. So we'll, we'll start at the end. And so from the advertising perspective, like generating headlines or different copy, like this is a great way to do it. You can specify brand voice. You can specify certain keywords that you want to hit. You can specify certain audiences. You can specify length. You can specify tone. There's so many things that you can provide as context. And from that, you can get a ton of different examples mm -hmm. on what you could use. And then you can use your intuition to figure out what you want to test. And then at the end of the day, the data is going to tell us what truly works. So lots of, lots of items there that we're currently using. Um, as we look at ad creatives, so the tools that are available like mid journey or stable diffusion, you know, on the image side, there's a lot of cool ways you can use that right now. Video it's weird right now, <laughs> not there yet, but definitely I see it being there in the future. Um, and I think it's going to come around pretty quickly. Um, but currently probably, probably not, not game time yet for that. Um, and then as we're looking at like search in general, I think the key thing is that there is so much that we don't know at this point. Yeah. You know, we can identify like key issues that could come up. Um, there is a ton of interest on this, a ton of dollars that are going into this, this is major revenue models for some really big players. Um, and so the, the innovation that happens here and how they're going to be able to incorporate in revenue generation into these products is going to be really interesting to watch. And from our standpoint, seeing how we can utilize advertising in these products like BARD or Bing um, or ChatGPT, if they have advertising right now, more of a subscription model for their pro subscription. But um, there's going to be so much that can change in the future and how that impacts items like how people search on Amazon. Yeah. Or do they find products and they use more chat GPT or Bing or Bard more um, because it can fine tune better because it knows more about us and knows what our preferences are. Or maybe Amazon can leverage that information to provide really, really good search results using tools that they're training up because they're leaders in AI too. Um, so lots of key questions that are out there. I think the one thing that's certain is that there's going to be a lot of changes coming up in the very short period. Yeah. <laughs> and so as digital advertisers, we're just going to have to try to navigate that, um, see what's working. I think the funnels, fundamentals are like continue to test as you go and make sure that we can react quickly. Um, but yeah, tons of different areas to navigate. Yeah, it'll be interesting over even the next six months to see where, where kind of things line out a little bit or you know, next advancements coming down the line. I feel like you know, we're, we're speculating a lot Yep. And, uh, until such time that things <laughs> become a little bit be more concrete. You know listening back to this podcast in like a year or two and being like, man, we were so off. <laughs> <laughs> so far away to the mark. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what can you do? Yeah, yeah, listen to those young people talking about <laughs> AI. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It'll be fun to look back and see where it's at just because it's changing so quick. But, yeah, well, as always, John, it was awesome to have you on the podcast again. Um, if you want to hear more from John, feel free to reach out, connect with him on LinkedIn. Um, and as always, we're putting out a ton of content just on what we're seeing here and doing. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or at advance or any other social platforms. Um, we now are more active on Twitter. So if you are on Twitter, we've been building that back up again and sharing a lot of cool things. Um, so we're, we're out there tweeting. So if you want to connect with us there too, um, do that. So as always, we really appreciate you joining the ad project podcast and we'll see you on the next episode.